everybody? Uh, kind of a bit of a different video today. I wanted to share my experiences about taking the leap of faith. Okay, I wanted to talk about um, what it means to quit your job and pursue your passion. Okay, which is what I did. And like, well, I, hold on. Um, I'll get into the details, but this is basically what I want to talk about. I want to talk about this experience because I think a lot of people out there struggle with this. And it's something that I've done, so I'd like to share that. So I guess I'll start off with uh, just a tiny bit of backstory. So um, I've always loved fighting, okay? So even I never really had a job, okay, in terms of where I was working before I was an arm wrestler. Okay, I was a military guy, and I will say that I was extremely happy being that. I really was. I mean, um, nothing is perfect, but I was extremely happy and extremely satisfied with like 95% of, of everything that was going on. Okay, I really enjoyed the military very, very much. Now, um, what, uh, what I will say is... So in Canada, at the time of my enlistment, uh, there's there's like a hard number, and that number is is 20 years. Okay, now I think it's 25, but when I enlisted, basically at, at 20 years, you get your chance to uh, ha to leave and have a pension. Okay, this is your first pensionable time block, and it was always my intention to at least do that. Okay. Like I said, I was extremely happy with, with everything in my job. It's, it's I, I didn't look at it as a job. I, I loved it. It was, it was my passion. I felt very strongly about, uh, about everything and I'm very pleased. Okay. Now I all also had a hobby, right? And I had many hobbies, but my hobbies all kind of dwindled away until there was arm wrestling and only arm wrestling. Okay. So, um, I had a family, um, I had my work as a military guy, and I had my hobby, which was my passion as well, okay, which was arm wrestling. Um, and I was actually able to do it at a very high level based off of, you know, with military service, there's a lot of time for you to pursue your hobbies, and, uh, you, you know... Um, you have enough money to get by. You you got enough food for your kids. So basically, your time is your time. If if you want to just develop whatever it is you want without any worries. So fast forward, fast forward. So um, initially, when I joined the military, um, I actually was sponsored by the military. I was sponsored by the military to go out and compete at nationals, compete at worlds. It was fantastic. Yeah, the military put me on temporary duty, let me go out and do all that stuff. Uh, 2001, I got to Special Forces, and uh, it was a very quick understanding that uh, you want to arm wrestle, you can do that on your own time. However, don't ever tell anybody you're in the Canadian Armed Forces. Don't ever talk about it. Uh, and really try and avoid the camera as much as you can. That was the, the understanding. And, you know, where I am now, you'd think that this is not at all the case, but actually it was back then. Um, you know, I did compete at high level. You know, I was, I was a world champion during this time period. But, you know, in every interview, if you go back, um, I was a farmer. Anytime there was print or video or anything electronic, I never talked about the military back then. I was uh, People knew I was in the military, but I avoided everything. Go forward to 2000 and like 13, 14. And what happened was arm wrestling just started to get big. Okay, all the pro leagues were picking up. Uh, UAL, Game of Arms, WAL, everything was just blowing up for us and um there were some separate incidents at work that didn't involve me but it, it resulted in a little bit of a crackdown on people who had extracurricular activities going on okay which kind of shone the spotlight a little bit on me and 
the concern was that arm wrestling was getting too popular, too popular, and that my ability to operate would uh, become compromised and I could become a liability. So um, I was given, and, and before we get any further, I had I have nothing but good feelings towards everyone who was involved in the decisions that were made. Uh, I think that the correct decisions were made, and um, and, and I and I really love all the people that I worked with, and um, and I hold no ill will. Okay, uh, it was a difficult, it was a very difficult decision and position that everybody was kind of in. So the issue was that uh, basically. I was given a choice, so Devin, you can stay an operator, or you, you know, if you, but if you stay an operator, you have to quit arm wrestling. So I either had to quit arm wrestling, or, or, or leave. Okay, and I was just I couldn't I couldn't deal with this because, um, I've been arm wrestling since I was five years old. You know. Uh, arm wrestling was what I did. I, I went home from work and I arm wrestled, and I was like, "Okay, this is gonna, this is not quite right." And you know, when you work at a, at uh, well, when you're when you're part of the CF or whatever, any forces for a long time, you know, after what was it? It was, it was Amazon. I think my 18th year, 17th, 18th year of service, and things start to get gray at that time anyways for a lot of people you know you start to get a little bit murky by then anyways so um so i didn't fight as hard as i could have potentially to stay um i was basically like uh you know i feel like uh, i cannot it's not right for me to stop doing my passion okay now so it was in a way it was kind of forced upon me but I know a lot of people are in a very similar position. So this is why I wanted to share this. Uh, a lot of people, for whatever reason, feel like they can, they can do what it is they love to do. They can quit their job. Maybe you work at a bank and you love to dance. Maybe you, uh, maybe you work at a, at, a, at a bakery making donuts and you want to become a professional arm wrestler. Maybe uh, maybe you work construction, but you really love uh, flowers and you want to be a florist, you know. Um, so it's difficult sometimes to quit something that's stable and steady and take that leap. So where, where was I? I was, you know, I've got, I've got three kids at home. I'm, I'm, the, I'm basically the sole provider of income. Uh, it's, it's, it's a, a healthy salary. Um, but we don't have, Jody and I did not have a ton of, a ton of savings. We were not financially completely secure. We, we were living kind of like we had some savings, but you know, by no means were we in a financial position where we could just, you know, do whatever we wanted. There's in no way was that the case. So I made the decision to take a year's leave without pay. Okay, so this is uh, this is a position which a lot of people find themselves in. Do I quit my job? Do I chase my passion? And and, and I did this. So I I took the year. Right away, everything changed. Everything changed for me. Okay, so incredible. You're you're doing what you love. You love to do it. Now I was also doing what I loved to do before, but it had grayed down a little bit. And I certainly was enjoying the arm wrestling actually more than the soldiering at that time. Um, and I, I really, I was so happy to be able to focus on it full time. Uh, there were financial stresses. I felt selfish. I felt as though I was being greedy. I felt as though I was being irresponsible for my family. I felt as though um, perhaps a better provider would have just stuck it out and stayed in the military given away you know his his requirement to to chase his dream uh for the stability that i could provide my family for those last couple of years or more um so there was a little bit of guilt involved in the decision it was not easy the year was hard the first the first while was very difficult okay what made it difficult were the financial issues 
That's what made it so difficult. Okay, when you chase your passion at the beginning, it's financially very difficult. It can be. Um, I was very lucky. I was super lucky because um, I got sponsors. Okay, thank you so much. I don't want to say your name, um, but thank you. Thank you for all the help that you gave me. If you're, if you're watching, I know exactly who you are. Um, and um, But I was lucky. I had sponsors and I won, okay? It was risky. It was, it was a risky move. Um, it worked for me. Um, and I continued to grind. Uh, what are the dangers? The dangers are when you leave your job and chase your passion, sometimes the financial pressures and the pressures that then come into what initially was a free, a feeling of freedom, um, can can taint the activity and make it once again like a job. Okay, one of the most beautiful things in life is to acquire freedom, freedom to do what you want with your time. And we always think that, you know, if I had all the if I had all the freedom, will I do the things that I love to do? And sometimes um, you don't quite have the freedom to do things exactly how you want, and it can taint your passion. And this is the thing that you really have to be careful of, that you do not let money so much affect what it is that you love to do, um, whatever it is. Um, I remember the most some of the most powerful words that I received before the 2016 finals while I was still, you know, really struggling for money. Um, I had to win. I had, I had to win. The year that I won two hammers, if I didn't win, it would have been a massive financial irresponsible thing for me to do. I would have massively let down my family. My kids wouldn't have eaten well. They would have been a bit shorter. They would have been a bit weaker. <laughs> would have been very bad. Okay. Um, I remember Mike Gould came over to me and he said, Devin, you're doing what you love to do. Just, just remember that. And it was very simple. And I still, even now, when arm wrestling has become my full life, it's everything really now. Um, well, it's not everything, but it's, it's, it's a big part of my life. It's bigger than it's ever been. Um, I still remember being, you know, 19 years old and running 30 kilometers to get to practice. You know, I used to live on Big Island, Ontario, and I used to run to Bloomfield. I don't know, maybe that's 20 some kilometers, but I used to run there and back sometimes just to get to practice because I loved it because I liked the feeling. So really, I just wanted to make this video because there's a lot of people out there who consider, um, you know, quitting their jobs for their passion. And you just have to be careful that your passion does not become your job again, because then you're just in the exact same place. What you're really after is freedom. And freedom is what you're really after. Now, it's always great when you can kill two birds with one stone. Do what you love. Have it make money for you. Perfect. Perfect. Um, you just have to be careful that the financial pressures don't don't end up clouding it and making it not what it was. Anyways, guys, I'm 18 days from LeVon. Biggest match of my life. It's my masterpiece. This is my masterpiece. My entire life is is being compressed into this, this one match. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I'm arm wrestling the greatest arm wrestler of all time. Okay, but um, I think I'm going to beat him. I do. I think it's going to be a glorious fight. Um, I think I'm going to win. Anyways, we'll find out soon. Uh, I'm very ready. I can't wait. Uh, thank you for uh, listening to my my wisdom. <laughs> I hope it helps some of you. Uh, all I can say is you only live once and uh, no regrets, you know, go for it.
you know, like uh, fuck safety, safety's off, fucking go for 